Hey guys, hope you're well. So we're doing one of the wines that uh, kind of started my YouTube channel. It is jam wine. Now jam wine is fantastic, especially for beginners, because it's so cheap and easy. Um, it comes in its pretty much own little kit. You don't need to add any sugar to it because it already has the sugar. The fruit is already pressed and is already in there, and it's really cheap. Um, you can't make a gallon of blackcurrant wine that tastes like this for three pounds. So it's a pretty good wine. Now it is a quick drinking wine. It means it's done in about a month. As soon as this thing clears, you can drink it. Now it doesn't keep very well. After about, eh, say, six months, it starts to degrade. So it is a quick drinking wine. Um, so if you're uh, wanting something to age, probably not the thing you want, but if you want something that tastes good, that you can drink quickly, this is probably the stuff you want. Now it's really good because Christmas is coming up. So uh, you can brew this up now and it will be ready for Christmas, before Christmas. Yeah. Cool, so uh, let's do this. So to begin with, nothing has to be sterile. I haven't said it yet because we don't need it yet. Everything just needs to be clean. That includes the pan and the side and the utensils and the water because we're gonna be boiling this. Now, we need to boil it because this jam, processed jam, contains sodium citrate, which is a preservative. Also happens to be cystitis relief. Now, that's the active ingredient in it. So, um, if you've got cystitis, eat lots of jam. Could work, though I think you'd probably die of uh, diabetes first. So, we're going to empty our jars of jam into our pan. Good. Uh, I think I need the solid one for this. It is a pretty solid jam. Wow, this jam is in here. This is a uh, new. I think they didn't account for the fact that black currants also have a lot of, uh, of pectin, relatively. More than cheapy cheap jam. So we have put in our four jars of jam. Mm. Mm. That's really good jam. So now, take some water. It doesn't matter the amount of water as long as it's under five liters. And now we add in our water. Right, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of warm water to clear out the jam in the jar. Be right back. Look at the color, it's beautiful. And that's only a small amount of jam. There we go. That is a lovely clean jam jar, apart from that bit. Um, like jam. There we go. So we now have our pan full of jam. Oh my God, I'm a poet. So I'm just gonna go grab the hob and we're gonna set this on to boil. Now adding hot water is going to make it boil quicker. If your pan is not this size, this holds eight liters of water and you can't fit all your jam and water in, do it in two batches. So now our pan is on to boil, so we need to bring it up to the boil. Oh my God, this is, this rhyme is going really well today. So we're going to bring this up to the boil and we'll be right back. And uh, jam pot. So our pot is just coming up to the boil. It's nice and hot. So we've got to leave it for 20 minutes. You can do less, but 20 minutes is a good time. It makes sure all the preservatives are gone. It will brew if you don't do this step. Downside is, it has a funny taste. I think so. Um, I've tried doing it with and without. It does brew, but it tastes funky. And no one likes a funky brew. So while this is coming up to the boil and boiling off all those preservatives, we can go ahead and sterilize our demijohn and get that all set up. Now I use thin bleach and dish soap. It's like taking a nuke to whatever you're uh, sterilizing. Works very well, use whatever works for you. So uh, I'm gonna go do that and uh, just pass some time. 20 minutes are up. It's actually 18 minutes, but I got bored. So, close enough. 
So we now have molten hot magma that we can't put in either a plastic or a glass demijohn. So we can leave this to cool down naturally, but uh, that takes forever. Instead, fill up your sink with cold water and dump it in. Exactly what I'm gonna do. But first, I'm gonna take a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. You can add it in later on and shake it up, but um, I find it dissolves easier in hot water. So just a nice blob teaspoon. Try not to get molten magma over your face. Give it a quick stir and that should all be dissolved in. Don't do it with anything else, uh, just yeast nutrient. You will lose a little bit, but um, it's just so easy, it's done. So uh, in the water it goes and we'll be back in about 30 minutes. So 30 minutes have passed and well, everything's good to go. I have sterilized my worktop so I can put all my stuff down and not worry about it. And that's just a funnel, a teaspoon and a hydrometer. Now we're gonna be adding in some pectolase because well, we want to remove the pectin from the jam. It was like concrete, so uh, cheaper jam, you don't have to worry about so much. This stuff I'm gonna use, um, don't want it to puke. So what I'm using is a water bottle. Uh, this is actually an old one, but it is sterilized and good to go. If you're using a fresh one, as in you've just bought it, don't open it until you need it, then it's sterilized, saves a step. So, because this is mostly cooled down, it's cooled down to the touch. It's not going to burn anything, it's not going to melt the plastic. Still a little warm, so I'm going to be adding in some cold water from my kettle. Because, uh, well, I make coffee a lot, so... It's definitely sterilized. You can use a jug or fill it directly from the tap. It's just easier to make the videos from here. So in goes my liter of nice cold water. Out of my funnel. And in goes my jus. Get the first look of it. I mean, look how dark that is. Haven't even finished adding it in. And it's, it's pretty dark stuff. And it smells really good. Like blackcurrant. So don't worry about the few bits, because this is all, it's all been pre-done. It's great. Actually, the whole, I think that actually pretty much all whole blackcurrants. Mm. I don't want to put that one in there. But that's cool. You can just check them in, dude. There's not enough fruit for it to bubble up and puke. So I'm just going to give this a rinse with some cold water. And we're going to top this up. And there we go. Perfect. Right at about the 5 litre mark. I actually prefer using these water bottles over the glass ones. Not because, you know, they're better, because, well, glass is better. They've got all these ridges. It's because you definitely get your six bottles of wine, your one gallon, from a five litre batch. So, this is actually pretty damn cold. It's very slightly warm. Perfect for pitching and perfect for adding pectolase. So I'm going to grab a teaspoon of pectolase. There we go. Dump it in. And now we can stick our lid on tightly and give it a good shake. That mixes up the water and also the pectolase so we get a good hydrometer reading. There we go. It looks beautiful. Very purple. Just going to give that a minute to settle and uh, we'll take the hydrometer reading. So I gave it a minute just to settle down and for most of these bubbles to disappear. Most. Um, otherwise it's going to take like an hour. Bloody thing. So we can open this up and stick our hydrometer in. Now, it should be right around somewhere around the 14% mark. That's my guess. Um, and I've based that on the fact that I read the jar. Because it is a manufactured product, they're pretty, pretty level across the board. It says there's 61 grams of sugar per 100 grams. Each jar is 450. So we're somewhere around the, oh, let's have a look. According to this, if it ferments to dryness, it is 14%. Whoa, 14%. Pretty close. If you're using a 4.5 litre demijohn, it will be 15.5%. If you use an American one, that's like 17. Which is, you know, something different. Wait a minute. 
I was chatting and I took it out. I didn't see exactly where that was. <gasps> so that is 1.084. So yeah, just 13.5% you know, if it ferments to dryness. Now I can give it a try. Mm. That tastes like blackcurrant. Mmm, nom 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 nom. So, the yeast I'm going to be using today is just some universal wine yeast. Uh, mine is Gervin from Wilco's. Because, you know, I like, I like all the generalized yeasts. They work, you can abuse them, and they work out really well. The official amount is one teaspoon, one teaspoon, one gram per gallon. So, I get asked how many how much yeast should I use? Or, I've used too much yeast. If you want, you can use the whole packet. I only use a small sprinkle, just like that. Not even, like, half a gram. Now, I actually have a reason for this. It's not just me being stingy, though that does help. I'm just gonna put the lid on here. The reason that I only add a little amount of yeast, whereas a lot of people say it's bad, is because it actually takes longer for the yeast to build up momentum so I can fill my demijohns higher up. Pretty cool to know. So by the time, the seven days, because usually when you add in the first seven days of fermentation are pretty wild. It goes bubbly and it, it does all that stuff. By the time they get to the seven days, this has built up enough steam just to ferment like normal. Um, I sterilize like an OCD person so it doesn't get infected. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video, giving you some ideas to make some tasty wine for cheap. Um, don't forget to check out some of my other videos and subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later. So, I just want to take a second to thank my patrons. Uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below, and of course the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. Yeah.